Hi and welcome. Today we are going to see how to create a drag and drop system in Unity. The final result will look something like this. We'll be able to drag the game object around and when we drop it somewhere near the slot, it will go and fit inside the slot. We'll be using the canvas event system and we'll be using the drag handler and the drop handler for writing the scripts. Welcome to Vinex Studio. Let's start making games. So I have an empty scene here and I have an axe image and a slot image. So both the images are set as Sprite 2D and UI. So let's go ahead and add some UI images. Click on the plus sign and go to UI image and I'll call the object. And then I'll add another image, UI image and I'll call this slot. So now let me just drag the slot image to the slot UI and the axe image to the object UI. So you can see in the scene that the axe is not visible. That is because the slot is on top of the game object. So the order should be something like this. The object that is going to go into the slot should be in the end. So you can just drag and drop it like this. So now you can see that the axe is visible. Also, let's make the slot a little bigger. So let's say 150 in width and 150 in height. So we'll be creating two scripts, one for dragging around the X and one for dropping it into the slot. So first let's go ahead with the drag script. So select your X game object and click on add component. And let's add a script called drag script. Create and add. Now let's open the script in Visual Studio for editing. Now we don't need these two using statements. But what we need is using Unity Engine dot event system because we'll be using the drag handler. And then we'll also need using Unity Engine dot UI because we need the image component to change the transparency. So this class is getting inherited from mono behavior and we also need to add I drag handler and also I begin drag handler and I end drag handler. Okay, so once you have inherited from all these classes, you can just click on them and press control dot then click on implement all members explicitly. So it will create a function for you to do this for all of these. Okay, control dot. Yep. So now we have a on begin drag, on drag, and on end drag. Let's declare the variables. The first variable that we need is the rect transform. So let's call it rec. Then we need the image component. So let's call it image img. So now we need to get these two components in the awake function. So let's say rec equal to get component rec transform. Okay, and then img equal to get component image. So now we have our rec transform and the image. Now what we need to do is when the drag is beginning, we just need to take the color of the image component and set the alpha value to 50. So for that, we'll also require a temporary color variable. So let's say color and let's call it temp color. Okay. So what we have to do is temp color equal to img dot color. Then you're going to say temp color dot alpha equal to 0.5f. And then you're going to set the ing dot color equal to tip color. Okay, now you can just copy this code because when the drag ends, you have to set it back. So let's just paste it here and set the alpha back to one. So when the drag ends, the image will be back to the same alpha as it was in the beginning. Now, when the drag is happening, we need to update the position of the image, that is the rect transforms position. The mouse movement data is available in the event data. So 
So we can what we can do is we can just say rec dot anchor position, which is the position of the anchor of the rec transform. So we are going to increment that with event data dot delta. So let's go back to Unity and see what our script does. So if I click on the game object and try to move it, it's moving along. So you can see that wherever I'm dragging the pointer, the game object is also moving. But this is the case where the canvas is basically a constant pixel size. But if I set the canvas to scale with screen size, then you can see that my image also has become big. And if I try to drag the game object now, the scale of the canvas and the moment of the pointer system is not actually syncing up. So that's because the amount of movement is multiplied by the canvas scale and we are not taking that into account. So to fix that issue, let's go back to our script and let's take another variable canvas and let's call it canvas. And let's make it a serialized field so that we can assign it in the inspector. And once the canvas will be assigned, you need to divide the event data dot delta by the canvas scale. So we'll just call it canvas dot scale factor. Now let's go back to Unity and let's assign the canvas. So let's just do this and let's play the game. And you can see that the canvas is set to scale with screen size. So if we play the game and try to drag the game object now. So now everything works fine. So, so now even if your canvas scales with screen size, the, there won't be any problem because we are taking that into account in our script. So everything is fine. We want the object to actually drop inside the slot and not stay wherever we leave it. So for example, if the player leaves it here, it should go and sit in the center of the slot. So to handle that, let's create the drop script and we'll be connecting the drop script to the slot and not to the object. So let's go ahead and create another script called drop script. Now the drops, let's open the drop script in Visual Studio for editing. Now for the drop script, we'll again be using the drop handler. So we need the Unity engine dot event system. So we don't need the start and the update. And after mono behavior, we also need the I drop handler. Okay, let's press control dot and say implement all members explicitly. So here, we're going to delete that one. And then we're going to add our own code that on drop, we're going to say that the axe position should be equal to the slot position. So to get the axe position, that data is available in the event data. So we'll just say event data dot pointer drag. That means the game object that is being dragged dot get component. We need to get the rect transform. And then we need to get the anchor position is equal to uh, get component because we need to get the rect transform of this component, the slot. So we're going to say rect transform. And then we're going to get the anchor position. So we are going to assign the anchored position of the X to the anchored position of the slot. So that's it. It's a simple script but it won't work. So let's go to Unity and see why it is not working. So when we play our game, you can see both the images are on top of each other. That means there can be only one raycast target. So since the object is on top of the slot, the only the object will be affected. So to make the slot interactive, we need to disable the X raycast when we are dragging it. So let's go back to the drag script. So when the drag is happening, we'll say image dot raycast target equal to false. So when the object is getting dragged along, the it would be a raycast target. And when the drag ends, we'll just say raycast target equal to true. So because we need to drag it again towards, so we need to set it back to true. So now let's go back to Unity. 
So I am able to drag it around and if, if I leave it near the end of the slot, it's going and slitting in the slot. And if I leave the hex outside, it remains outside. If I leave it somewhere near the end of the slot, it goes and sits in the slot. So that's it. You have implemented a drag and drop system. So with this, you can build an inventory for your game. All the code samples are available on Mining Studio. The link is there in the description. And if you have any other questions, you can leave them in the comment box below. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.